All right, guys, it's been a long time since we've been taking a look at anything from Cooler Master, which is why today we're gonna take a look at the Cooler Master Master Box NR200P Max. Master. Master Max. Crucial's new external SSDs are a must-have for any tech or PC enthusiast. The Crucial X6 offers read speeds of up to 800 megabytes per second and available in sizes from 500 gigabytes to four terabytes of storage space, while the X8 offers extreme speeds over one gigabyte per second and up to two terabytes capacity. External SSDs are a great way to back up important files and documents, store game libraries, and make moving items between PCs quick and easy. To learn more about the X6 and X8 portable SSDs from Crucial, follow the link in the description below. All right, one thing I'm never gonna stop ragging on Cooler Master about is their absolute stupid, stupid naming. But you can call it whatever you want if it's a good product. But before we get to that, I wanna show you guys our latest shirt design, which is just, well, it's literally in pre-sale right now by the time you guys are seeing this. They've all been received, and at the rate our shirts have been selling out, you guys are gonna want this one. This is our GPU Apocalypse shirt. So I think it's a pretty cool design. Yeah, basically think of like Book of Eli, only it's GPUs. Anyway, they're in pre-sale right now. Um, they will sell out just like our previous shirts. When they're gone, they're gone. We also have drinkware. The drinkware is finally there. We have, it's basically a drinkware set. We got shot glasses, whiskey glasses, and a pint that come in a three pack. Uh, you guys can find the links to all that stuff down below. If you guys wanna support the channel through getting some merch that we put a lot of effort into, you guys can do that. I didn't have a knife ready to go. So there we go. Terrible segue, but uh, we'll go ahead and see what we got in here. This box is thrashed. So <laughs> I, this is going to be a good test of their uh, internal packaging, isn't it? Because yeah, I mean, everything's going to probably be intact. All right. So here's the deal. This is the max. One of the major problems with the original NR200P is it, it had the side bracket that you could put two fans or a radiator on, which would blow directly on your GPU as well, which actually hung from the top because it was like an inverted hanging design. The problem is if you want, a lot of people ran their 240 AIOs with the radiator on the bottom with the pump above it, which is, look, we've talked about like a lot of people freak out over things that aren't really worth freaking out over when it comes to some of the placements of the radiator stuff. That is an absolute problem. You do not mount your radiator at the bottom with an AIO. So they've addressed that in this one here. Something else that makes this one kind of interesting. It's the first case we've ever taken a look at that gives you both tempered glass and mesh panel side panels. So there's the tempered glass one sitting there in the box. And what's already installed on the case is a mesh panel. So you get to choose. Do you want it to be pretty or do you want extra airflow with a ventilated side panel? This is a SFF, SFF, small form factor case, which means we're talking about ITX motherboard. We're talking about uh, limited space for certain GPUs and stuff, but Small form factor cases have definitely been making a big impression on people in the world lately, and a lot of people are enjoying it. It's not the smallest small form factor case that you're gonna find, but it's definitely sleek. We have the gunmetal gray edition here. I'm a little disappointed, Cooler Master, if you're watching. Phil and I are both very sad that the colored versions, the teal, the orange, the purple, the white, and all that stuff is only available with the old edition. So please come out with colored versions of the Max. But anyway, moving forward. Okay, so here's the case as you can see right here. I thought this was, was gonna be a much more textured. It's actually very smooth uh, powder coating on here. This is the gray one, like I said. Um, but what I was gonna say is this isn't just a case review. This has a power supply and a 280 millimeter meter AIO already mounted in here. So that means that you're gonna be able to uh, not have to worry about the routing of tubing and all that stuff because it actually has hold downs for the tubes. We'll, we'll show you that. So there's a lot of well thought out features in this case. The GPU is already a vertical mount. Forgive me while I'm trying to figure out how to actually open the thing up. Ah, it just pops off. So here's the mesh side panel, like I said. It's got the uh, magnetic filter on here, which you could also remove if you wanted maximum airflow. So nice big perforations. Once you put on the mesh grill, which you can blow through kind of easily, actually. If it's really, really fine, then it becomes difficult to actually get air to go through it, which makes it filter well, but also not cool very well. So now that we're inside here, we're gonna find quite a few things here. We're gonna find our riser cable, silica gel, so that it doesn't get all moist in there. I know I just triggered someone by saying the word moist. Did you know the word moist really triggers people? I don't know why. What is it about the word moist? It doesn't bother me. But you know what triggers me, actually, is the word grumpy. 
The word grumpy literally just like... It's like irrational and you just get angry when you hear it. And, and it, yeah, it's totally irrational. I, it's, I, I can't even justify it. Why are you so grumpy? The fact that I'm even hearing the word... All right, I digress. Moving on, back to the case at hand. The back side does not have a glass replacement. It is just basically the mirror of the one side that we showed you there. There's the top piece. Um, not a removable mesh. You could take it off technically if you wanted. The mesh here, if you look carefully inside, you can see right here, they're just bent over a tab. So you could straighten those out and pull it off if you wanted. Um, if, if you wanted to come up with something custom up here. It's not the prettiest looking thing underneath. So I don't know if I would necessarily remove the mesh. Air does blow through, but it's not exactly the most high flow. Radiator's already mounted, as you can see. That's the 280 millimeter radiator at the top. The fans are exhausting, which means it's gonna take all of the hot air that's in the system and pull it out through the top. It is also a fully negative case pressure case. The reason why I say that is there are no intake fans anywhere else, at least at the time of looking at this, there are no fan mounts at the bottom. So that means this is entirely negative airflow. That's why all of the panels that you see are mesh and filtered because it's gonna be pulling in air from anywhere that it possibly can. Oh, I see, okay. So it does hinge on there, but it's got four screws to hold that in place. And that didn't really help a whole lot. There we go. Because they also have this guy in here holding their pump in place, which does not have pre-applied thermal paste. I wanna point that out right there. It is a copper uh, cold plate. Very rough, which shouldn't be a problem. We've, we've talked about this before. It does have braided tubes. Here's the power supply right here. And I'm gonna pull this guy out. Coolest motherboard ever, right there. This is your vertical mount for the graphics card. It does support a three slot uh, GPU. Wow, could we actually fit? Hold on. This is one of the biggest GPUs you can get. Not the biggest, but one of the biggest. Holy crap. <laughs> A small form factor case that will fit a For the Win 3 card. Okay, now I'm excited. It was like, no, stay. It, it doesn't want to get rid of, it doesn't want to let go. This entire case is put together with screws, not rivets. See, we can just start fully disassembling it if we want to do mods, which I'm not going to do right now, but I'm going to be doing a build in the future here where my six-year-old is going to get her first computer. Yeah, I know. Okay, my oldest daughter got her first at three. She built her first at five, and now she's at, she had another one built when she was nine, and you guys saw, when she was 11, we built her a system that's water-cooled with a 2080 Ti. Send all your hate mail to nick at jstwosense.com. Anyway, but Jay, that RTX 3090 for the Win 3 card definitely is gonna pull too much power for that SFF power supply, or SFX power supply. It's an 850 watt gold-rated SFX power, 800, and 50 watt. Phil and I were freaking out when we found a 700 watt one time. That's why if I sound like an excited little schoolgirl right now, because of the fact that I can not be like, well, you know, what usually holds back our SFF extreme builds is the power supply. Not this time. Front panel here is your power, not a power button. Power button's up here. <laughs> I, they've had cases where that was the button, okay? It got me. That's just that little imprint logo. Take a look at the bottom here, you can see. That's the pump. Take, take. Oh no. <laughs> it's fine. Take a look at the bottom here. It does also have a, a filter on there. Like I told you, all of the vents in this thing are filtered. Well, most of them anyway, uh, because of the fact that it's a full negative pressure case. You can see the back, like this right here doesn't have any ventilation or any filters on there. So you could get dust potentially in through there. Let me go ahead and get a, uh, let me just plop a motherboard in here real quick so we can see what the fitment is like with uh, a motherboard. The, uh, well, before we do that, why don't we take a look at the riser cable? Because that's the other major piece of the puzzle. So, the cutest little riser cable you've ever seen. It's rigid. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be flexy. <laughs> it's rigid. 
Well, because the graphics card obviously is going to have to mount to something, right? And that's the system I want to see right now is like, how does that graphics card get support? So what we've got here, this is all of our mounting mechanism for our um, block. So this is kind of your AMD hardware and your Intel hardware and all your screws and stuff. So you can get that mounted up to your motherboard. Additional SATA power cable right there, as well as an additional Molex power cable. Big beefy power cable because of the fact that this is an 850 watt, like I said. Let's do this. Let's get a motherboard installed in here. Let's look at the manual and see how the riser cable works. We'll see how much distance we have for between the side panel with a big card like the uh, For The Win 3. The last thing you want is your fans too close to the side window. The side mesh, the worst thing you would experience if it was too close is you would actually hear the fans making an interesting sound across the grate. But solid panel like that, not allowing the card to breathe, is guaranteed for throttle. Uh, hard drive mounts are on the front. You just pull up right there. This thing is so here's your hard drive mounts right here. This is what the little rubber standoffs are for. So you can mount uh, two and a half inch SSDs right there. So you can mount two of them there. Uh, they're gonna go on this side though. You can see the water cooling hoses are already zip tied down right there because they are free routed to get it over to here. So you have plenty of height like you showed. And yeah, no intake fans on the bottom whatsoever. Like I said, that s serves no purpose other than to just allow it to pull air from basically all four sides. Okay, so there's no official mention of bottom mounts for fans, although we did notice 120s line up perfectly with those slots. And we did notice that it seems to have just enough room at the bottom to not hit the graphics card with how much higher the graphics card is mounted up. Could probably get it to mount here. No. No, with all those cables and stuff there, it doesn't, I mean, you could obviously, you could obviously get a fan to work with a little bit of finagling. It's not officially supported. I kind of wish Cooler Master had made this maybe just a slightly, just slightly taller and then just have actual fan mounts there. Um, Cause then you could fit two intakes on the bottom, which would then two intakes on the bottom, two exhausts on the top. And then at least you would have one fan helping bring some air in. One would be better than nothing. All right, so I got the GPU and the motherboard in there. So one thing I want to point out here is that the graphics card is a little on the floppy side. The only thing giving it any support for side to side type movement is that rigid uh, riser cable in there, like I said. If this is just sitting there on your desk, not moving or doing anything, it's gonna be just fine. The sag is actually minimal. This is a heavy card and not the most rigid in terms of the cooler design because it doesn't brace itself on the front of the card. See, it can twist on the card itself. Uh, no, I guess not. That's just, that's just the amount of play there is. I feel like there's a missed opportunity here for Cooler Master have had to some sort of a rigid mount. I just am not a fan of cards that have a, enough, a, a lot of play like this because of the fact that small form factor builds are the kind of build that you take to your friend's house and you go, hey, let's have a little LAN party or there's a LAN party happening in your area and you might want to transport it. This is not going to be the most secure. I would highly recommend if you were going to be doing something like that to then cut a piece of foam or something and make a support for it yourself. That way it can't move around too much. So you can even take the foam that came with the, the case and you can see how this is layers, like ice cream sandwich. Isn't it funny how a fat guy like me went right to ice cream sandwiches? Well, I was about to say, I feel like I'm filming a cooking show right now. <laughs> yeah, so look at that. Just bake your GPU in the oven for... All right, so I might've cut a little bit too much, too much off of that one, but now I at least can't droop in the back. So what I would do then is if, if that was too much, I'd probably even just cut this in half. It really does look like you're chopping a cake or something. It's not the most rigid thing in the world. Hell, there's all these grooves on the bottom you could make or even 3D print. Hey, Phil, you want to 3D print a bracket for this? Sure. <laughs> but that gives it a little bit more support at least so it can't sag on the end. It's not putting all that stress on the bracket. And to be honest, that foam doesn't even look terrible in there. Look at that. Yeah, you can't really see it at all. But if this was a very, you know, RGB heavy graphics card, you would do that. With a, with a big card, a, a, a two and a half slot card like that, I would probably not run the glass panel if you wanna know the truth. There is room there. It's better than some cases. In fact, if you look at the back, I mean, I, I know this is gonna be kind of hard to pick up on camera. I would say there's probably about 10 to 15 millimeters of space between the front of this GPU and the glass. 
So although the glass looks awesome, I wouldn't do that unless it was just a two slot GPU. This would, this would actually probably be okay just because of how much intake there is on the bottom. It's just, that's a lot of asking, well, what you can end up getting too is a lot of recirculation of hot air. Yes, we have two 280 millimeter fans on the top. That's gonna do a good job of pulling the heat out. But remember, the, down, the, the axial fans make it exhaust both sides of the card. So you're gonna have hot air coming down and if it's just getting circulated around the front like that, by having the mesh panel on the side with a thick uh, GPU like this means it's gonna get as much fresh air pulled into the side as it can. So you probably would see some throttling like this depending on what kind of card? I mean, this is a 3090, so this is clearly gonna be the highest um, TDP card that you can in this particular GPU family. But if you were running like a 3070, something like that, maybe that's a little bit less uh, demanding. This particular card too has these kind of a wavy grooves in them, and that's designed to get a little bit of room between the fans uh, to recess them a little bit to get a little bit more airflow. But if I were gonna be running that like that, I would clearly be running um, the, the mesh side panel. So what's in here right now is a Z470 or Z490 motherboard, which could run 10900K, 11900K, or you could put an AMD board in here, run Ryzen 5950X if you want, and a 3090, water-cooled CPU, multiple SSDs, integrated water cooling, already installed and routed cables for you for the power supply, I mean that this might be one of the most, and yeah, I stuck them out there because typically to put in a graphics card, those would already be plugged in and routed somewhere. So I just pushed them out the side. That makes this probably quite honestly, one of the most user-friendly small form factor builds that you could possibly get. Not to mention the fact that you could pull every panel off with just a screwdriver, including all of these support pieces. So you could custom paint it, mod it, do whatever you want. I mean that I, I, <laughs> I really plan on using this for my daughter's build, but I'm starting to like it so much, I don't know. I love my kid, but I don't know how much. But yeah, if I had any complaints, honestly, um, it would have to be the fact that the GPU needs support. Um, just by cutting a piece of foam and sticking it in there is better than nothing. Um, you can see there's still wiggle room, but if it's sitting on your desk, that's not gonna matter. My only concern would be is if you were planning on trying to tr build a LAN PC, you know, for LAN parties and stuff, then that would need some sort of bracing. Even if you put it in like a Pelican case or whatever and try to fly with it, it, I guarantee this will break, guaranteed. You would have to remove the graphics card and carry it separately to fly with this. There's no way I would trust this mount to keep your graphics card safe. Um, if you're willing to deal with that then, or make a bracket for it, then it would make a good LAN rig because the amount of power that you can get out of this system uh, is, is just gonna be un, unparalleled in terms of a case this size. It's about the size of a shoe box for size 13 shoe. However many liters that is, I don't know. How many liters in an American 13? Anyway, there you go. If you guys wanna see a build in this case, in fact, if you wanna see my six year old daughter come and build a computer in here, sound off in the comments and let me know. It's gonna happen probably regardless, but if you wanna see it, then know that that's probably coming. This might be a little bit harder build for a first timer. Actually, maybe not. She doesn't have to mount the power supply. She doesn't have to mount the, the cooler or any of that stuff. It's kind of cheating. But my daughter wants to play Minecraft with my oldest daughter, and she plays right now on a tablet. And I feel like a bad parent, considering my oldest daughter had a computer at three years old, and my six-year-old still hasn't had her first. So I'm feeling like a inconsistent parent at the moment. The NR200P Max from Cooler Master. This was a logical upgrade to the non-Max edition, which had, in my opinion, not the best internal layout. This one, just checks all the boxes in terms of small form factor built. The finish is good, the color's good, it's consistent. The fitment of it. Phil, could you fit this in your uh, shift? Nope. Not even close. And can you, can you fit this? It's a radiator. Yeah, it's, no, it's more than twice. You have a 120, this is, this is a 280. All right guys, if you wanna see the build, comment down below, like this video if you liked it, share it with someone that you think would enjoy this video. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to get your new GPU apocalypse shirt as I'm sitting next to a 3090 with it. <laughs>